So now I'm coming to the topic of pitching. Have you pitched before? What does pitching mean? You can see it in the faces of those young ladies. They are trying to throw a ball into a goal. They are concentrating very hard with all of their energy on hitting and uh, reaching that goal that they are focusing on. Faces really uh, tell you a lot um, about what pitching is about. And it's actually coming from the word, word elevate the pitch, which means that you happen to, you know, coincidentally run into someone and you have a couple of minutes, uh, the elevator ride, and uh, you are able to uh, describe that idea that you have to the person who is with you in that elevator. And by the end, uh, you have a deal with that person. So this is like, a, you know, a huge challenge, of course, because you need to be able to communicate whatever you want to sell that person um, in a very fast, visual way to have a deal at the end. So that's the challenge um, we have when we need to pitch our ideas. So what's the difference between pitching and pitching on stage versus presenting? And um, you have understood that with my previous description already, you know, when we present our ideas um, on the right side here, then we are giving a comprehensive overview about our venture, about the plans we have, and we have a lot more time than the time you have in an elevator ride. And you have different goals as well. I mean, you are presenting yourself, you're you know, showing your competencies, um, you want to be visible, you maybe educate someone, um, something like a TED talk, you're, you're sharing knowledge with other people. A stage pitch is something where you have uh, just a couple of minutes, maybe you have seven minutes. Um, and it's a very targeted um, storytelling exercise, actually. And you might have to select very specific parts of that entire knowledge that you have about the product or service that you are creating uh, to be able to connect with that person you are talking to or to that audience that is listen, listening to you. And most importantly, the goal is that people remember you. They remember you as a person, they remember your product and they act on it. They, they will approach you. Um, you're able to sell in the sense of uh, and in the connection of our hackathon coming up, uh, people will come to you after you pitch your idea uh, in, in, in the front, on stage or whatever it is that you're pitching in, in the digital space as well. You want people to come and say, hey, can I work with you? How do we do that? So very different uh, setup and different motivation behind it. So what does an elevator pitch actually need? You need to uh, address those points here in, in this very short amount of time that you have. So you need to address who is it for, whose problem you're solving, what is the name of your product? That's something that people can remember. And what is the market category that key benefit that people gain when uh, they interact um, with your product or service? Who is uh, the competition about that and why are you unique? You can see all of it um, aiming to make people understand and remember you at the same time. I've already said it, storytelling is key. You need to know who sits in front of you so that you can understand which kind of elements need to be part of your storytelling so that they remember you. So 90% actually for you, you know, of your effort and for you to, to understand uh, how you have to uh, frame or put together your story is to understand the audience. You understand their background, their interests and what they are looking for. Remember, you are trying to um, make them act. How can you find out which elements will make them act? We need to know about them. That's the homework you need to do. And then you need to choose those parts 
that you can put together as a story that connect to these people that you know you're talking to. Should be very short in the sense of don't have more than three to five key messages as be, at best you have only one message. Uh, it's the power of one. People cannot remember many things in their mind. Make it easy for them to remember you and to act uh, and approach you afterwards. Visual is very, very important because visuals uh, connect to people's uh, brains and minds in a much better way than, than text. Remembering our goal, we want to be the only people, the only person that is remembered so that people can come and approach you afterwards. So here there's a small formula on you know, how you can compose this, uh, this story. It's recommended to spend um, you know, 5% of the time on, on a hook. So something that is maybe completely out of the, the line and different than any, what anybody can say. So to grab listeners attention. Imagine you're, you're you know, presenting your idea, you're pitching your idea after 20 other people have already done so. Um, how do you wake them up um, and make you, uh, how do you wake them up and make them listen to you? Take about 20% about the need. What, what is this about that your product and service is covering and explain how this will work. But what's the unique part of it and what's new? Um, focus on the benefits and the competition as well here. And then come back and say, okay, these are the important points that I've uh, touched upon and this is what I want you to remember. Very important part, even if it's only 5% at the end, uh, if that's missing, you're missing out a lot. Same goes for the hook to grab listeners' attention. So by now, maybe um, you got this as well. You know, it's really important to enjoy the, story, the, the journey. And it's important to have fun because this fun and this humor uh, jumps over and connects to your audience. And working together should always have a fun element, of course, as well, because that's uh, uh, why we do it, right? So make sure you have fun doing what you're doing. And now let's come again and use the iceberg um, visualization. And we would like to turn around the iceberg now. So um, you have only part um, space for the part on top of the waterline. Uh, you have to choose a certain elephant elements, not elephants. I love the actually the elephant analogy as well, but that's another story. Um, you have to choose and select very wisely which parts you're putting above the waterline and um, not feel bad about, you know, everything else you know that you're not talking about. Maybe, uh, you know, what you've already finished, what you're so proud of, what you're still planning and looking forward to and all the motivation and the team members and everything else that excites you about your idea. Um, you really have to take that, that plunge, that jump and say, I'm turning around the iceberg and I'm gonna feel okay about leaving out things that might be important to me. I will focus on what's important to the audience um, so that they can act and come and approach it. Okay, I hope I have given you a, a lot of uh, useful input. Um, I'm very much looking forward to uh, work with you, to, to support you. Um, here's the different ways how you can connect with me. Um, you can connect with me already now, um, use the opportunity. And um, yeah, I hope you've in, enjoyed our, our session and I'm looking forward to uh, seeing you